and welcome to Gag of the Millennial. A show where we talk about pop culture, current events, and spill the hot Darjeeling right into your lap. Scaldy world, y'all. Oh, <laughs> that was a perfect intro. It there was no just... cutting off. There was no jumping <laughs> and in. And no humour at there all. There was no humour at all. Uh, we've all died. Hi, Lex Area. Hello. How are you? Hi. Having a horrible day. She's having a horrible day. <laughs> yes. But I look great, so she it's do- fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, bazonga scale. Uh, She's got her breasts out today. <laughs> anyway. anyway. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome back to a new episode of Gag of the Millennial. Nah. And... Following on our last video where we did current events. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> the dreaded topic of current events, which we never do. <laughs> no, we, our podcast all about current events. Current events. We event. never talk about never. it. Um, we thought we would start the year on, a, this is our, I think it's our first gag of the year. What has happened so far this year? The bonkersness. Because already 2023 is lining up to be totally deranged. Yeah, a historic year for uh, many reasons. For many reasons. Most of them unpleasant. So I want to start today on a topic that you recently did a short about on your yes. YouTube. Yes. And we, we've discussed this many times, but the goth baby. The goth baby. How did this become a thing? Like, How did the goth baby become such a, like, a talking point that loose women were like, we need to do an entire segment on how awful this baby is. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't generally understand how this was taken in any other context except like, this is kind of fun and a yes. bit silly. So the goth baby, if you don't know, is a baby by... Um, a streamer. I think she's a streamer. She's an ex. She's like an, yeah, she's, yeah, she's like she's, an influencer. Kind yeah, of she's thing. got. She does lots of things. And they had a baby, a baby, a baby. And they decided to like decorate their whole house in the style kind of like Wednesday Adams. Now yes. I don't know if this kind of thing just sort of. Uh, coincided at the same time and they're because they're kind of alternative people anyway so I'm yes, guessing they, they probably yes, were yes. attracted to like the dark and macabre side of life she basically made little TikTok snippets being like a day in the life of a gothic baby yep. and then had like funny little quips about like the day in the life of this goth baby quite clearly it was an amusing like fun thing yeah it's that not they meant to be serious it's clearly some kind like they're like they're doing it's like not a joke because obviously they just are quite fact. gothic themselves, but not a joke, just a fact. <laughs> but like they're doing it in like a fun way. They're not going mm-hmm. like, we make our babies yeah. in the dark room and she cannot Drinks leave. Blood. No, yeah. yeah, like it's ridiculous. So she, yeah, she's called Rebby Hardy. She's got 317,000 followers. So she's at least somewhat known. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I she's also a Twitch streamer. I think that's what she's Is that, like, what, is that what she's known for? Thing. But loose women. So yes. we have a TV show here. I'm not sure. I think channel three is ITV. Yeah, it's, it's ITV. ITV. Um, it's on ITV. It's called Loose Women, where basically it's like middle-aged, slightly older women go on this TV show. They're like the panelists. I guess it's like the English version of The View. Yes, very much so. Except their views tend to sort of lean on the right side of the political spectrum. Yes. Not always, but they tend to sort of lean that way very much like, look at these ridiculous people doing all this ridiculous stuff. Yes. I just can't wait until they literally like launch their tirade into trans people because it's com- we all it's know coming, it's coming it's this coming. year. It's coming. Um, but they're, yeah, they're, they've had, I mean, they've had like many scandals over the time that mm-hmm. the show's been on air. And many like complaints from people and mm-hmm. stuff because sometimes their takes on things are a bit problematic. But Katie Piper. Katie Piper. Katie so, Piper. Katie Piper. I'm going to say something a little bit like controversial here, but I feel like she should have known better before saying this. Mm. And the only reason why I say this is because Katie Piper has done a lot of work trying to raise awareness about um, people that look different in any sort of walk of life, whether yes. that's through their own choice or not. Yes. Katie Piper was very... Like, um, it was like a huge deal when she she was acid attacked by an ex-boyfriend yeah. about, what is it, like 10 or 12 years ago? Yeah, now? it was a long time Something ago like now. This. And yeah. she had some incredible, like, story to do with, like, going through recovery and experiencing, like, the cutting edge of medicine at the time yes, to yes, basically yes. give her her life back. Yeah. And it was this huge, like, triumphant story when she actually started to come out with it. And then, like, there was documentaries made about these cutting-edge processes that she'd had a hand in developing as well for people who are victims of acid attacks or burn victims or anything with, like, disfigurement-based... Affliction is the affliction the right yeah, word? Yeah, I'm not sure what the right language is to use. How, but... Yeah, I don't know how to use the language here that's like most appropriate. So it's really strange that she picked on this family and this goth baby for the way that they look. I was yes. just a bit like, this is. I, as soon as I heard this, I was like, this doesn't sound like something Katie Piper would say. So the thing is, I think what the real problem with a lot of this was is because she said. 
It's satanic. It's yeah. toxic. I don't like it. Yeah. And they're basically they were kind of talking, even some of the other women as well, they were talking on the panel basically like really like emphasizing really old stereotypes mm-hmm. around gothic alternative mm-hmm. people. Satanic panic. That we were that we're evil, yeah. that we are somewhat to be feared, that yeah. we are, you know, uh And e- raising children is somehow like incorrect for gothic yes. people to be doing. And like if if you're going to be gothy or whatever, you are not allowed to dress your baby in like black clothing. Yeah. Yet they have no problem with like Barbie girl, like Barbie mums being yeah. like dressing their pink, kids in like pink. bright pink clothing. It's really sad to see this happening because not that long ago, uh, remind me the name, sorry. Uh, Sophie Lancaster. Sophie Lancaster. I think it was 2007. Eight. She was... Murdered, yeah, brutally for murdered being goth. for being goth. People attacked her. 2007. 2007 attacked her for being goth because they saw her as something different. And there was a lot of this sort of like satanic panic mm-hmm. ch- chat going around about gothic people. Um, because I guess that was like the that was the that was the the era of like the gothy emo people. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. there was so much talk around the time about like the culture being awful and toxic and horrible. Mm-hmm. And this woman was murdered because of it. Yeah. And so it's so jarring to hear in 2020, well, this is last year this happened. Yeah. Like last year, to hear this going on about a, a, an alternative goth family. Just so casually as well. Just yes. so like, well, it's satanic and it's toxic and I don't like it. It's like, well, where can you go with That's not like, oh, it's not for me. It's not myself. Exactly. That's no, just literally like, cut it down, awful. There's nothing get rid critique of it. about that that's like, yeah. oh, help me or like helping. It's literally just like, you are awful people. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't do this. And what's stupid about this, if you actually like look into this woman's Instagram, you will see they have an entire room dedicated to like, color yeah. visual stimulants yeah and like to help the baby under well develop guess, develop yeah. yeah and so there's loads of sensory things as, as kids need it's not like she's sitting in this dark room 24 7 not being able to do anything it infuriates me just the lack of a really awareness yeah. yeah a really important thing to mention about this story as well is that katie piper was raised atheist and she had pretty strong atheist beliefs and then after this like horrific attack that happened to her, she found God and became like a quite an intense Christian. And that then says to me that there's a power dynamic when you say that's satanic, that's toxic. That yeah. to me sounds like an institution talking through your mouth yes, rather than yes. like an individual's idea. Yeah. Because I don't think these people are satanic at all. Oh, absolutely and ridic- I th- ridiculous. I think also there's like a misconception of exactly what satanic is because yes. there have been his- historical movements of people associated with satanism and satanic things. Actually, when you look into, for example, Levian satanism, you'll see that it's the antithesis of some of the teachings of the Bible, which is forgive your neighbor if they trespass against you everyone's family no matter what they've done to you or your children it's like no actually they're all about like kind of libertarianism but in a way that's not like everybody die it's like you should be responsible for yourself on this planet yeah i think it's it's such an outdated idea that satanism is is inherently evil when in any in any aspect of life and regardless of what community you're in Mm -hmm. in into there will always be like extremist with everything but to Say that this family being like, it's toxic, it's like evil, it's satanic, like, it's that's so. How can you say that about like a baby? A baby? How like, can you it's, say that about a baby? It's, it's really it's, weird. Bonkers, and it's it's one of these things where it's like I'm I'm never someone to say like you can't have your own opinions, you can't do anything, but I do just find it very jarring. Katie Piper's like in her whole like storyline of life that she's experienced. Said it? I'm really yeah. surprised that it's her. And I just don't, I don't know. I feel like it's very jarring to sort of see that and hear that. You've done so much work to try and destigmatize the way that people look. Yeah. And so why have you suddenly stigmatized the way that these people look? Move on, sis. Stop stop boasting about these like outdated stereotypes that mm-hmm. we're all f- satanic and we're gonna like kill your children and eat them and suck out the souls of the living. Uh, dead. So someone that we should probably have a little discussion about because I haven't mm. really spoke to you about that much about him mm. and it's the Andrew Tate saga. Oh god. Yeah. So last year I made a video about Andrew Tate mm-hmm. um, and how his rabid fans mm-hmm. came after me on Twitter because I just tweeted one thing about him. So Andrew Tate was uh, arrested in Romania on charges of rape and sex trafficking. Very extreme. He was held for 30 days and then his lawyers tried to get, get him out. Get 
get him yeah. out. <laughs> but because he is a flight risk, because he has promoted on social media himself mm-hmm. that he has, you know, 20 plus or whatever passports and where he can just go wherever he wants. The Romanian authorities were like, you're too much of a you're flight risk. A risk. You're going to, you're going to, you're going you're gonna to flee. flee the country. So we're going to keep you. So now he's actually in custody at least, I think it was like the 28th of February, so yeah. like towards the end of yeah. February. So what, tell me, what do you, how much do you know about Andrew Tate? Like, where did you come into your site, guys? Like, what was the tea? The most I actually saw about it was, I think the first time I saw anything about him was on Reddit, actually. Yes. But also, like, my ex was kind of, he's, this person is parroting the same talking points that my ex would constantly. And I yes. think at that point, I was just like, ah, blocking all of this block, out block, just block, to block, like, yeah. save my mental health. Yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. I know basically the scandal that's happened. And I, yes. Have you seen recently the new photo that they've that's been shared around him? Like today, basically, where he's got like hair slightly growing in. Oh, and yes. And he's like lost a lot of his hair, but he always tried to promote himself as like, I'm bald by choice. Yes, I shave was, it. I, I'm so manly I'm that not, I, just, I, I, just do, I just don't want my hair because like hair is for women or something it's ridiculous. Hair is for women. And it's like, oh no. So, th- like, it just goes to show that his whole like persona is just ridiculous. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I know there are, so, there are so many people being like, the stuff that he would say on the internet. I'm kind of talking about this, like, as if you have some kind of information about yeah. Andrew Tate. It's very difficult for me to watch, go down through watch everything. Your video about yeah. It, yeah. So, if you want to know more about him, like, it just, you have to kind of maybe do some research just because there's so much to go down. But he, his, like, character he plays on the internet that he's tried to be like and his fans try to go that it's not real whatever Mm. it's like that only goes to a certain extent because Mm -hmm. when you get to a such infamy i'm gonna say not not fame for him Mm. but like when you get such infamy you have such a massive following like he has like a million followers on like some of his stuff like so big that it doesn't matter that even if one percent yeah of what you're believing like what you're followers think is real whatever yeah. because you're still you like one percent of like a million is still thousands and thousands and thousands well i think it's it'll even be it's gonna be more than one percent but yeah. like the fact that you're still radicalizing all of these people it doesn't matter if you're playing character which i don't think he is so no. when he was when he was um it's the same as alex jones when he was like it's a character it's not real it's like no you are like you this. are like you are, this. this is not a character so this is my so so many people were trying to defend him when he was kicked out of big brother so when he was kicked out of big brother in 2016 so he was on big brother and he what's really strange about watching the Big Brother clips is he's so subdued and like oh really oh, it's like a totally different person it's so weird because it's such like a while ago and like he's like there's moments where he's like sitting on the sofas and things I, I just remember because I watched it back then and like the, the 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 contestants were like talking and he was trying to put his like sense in but no one was giving a shit about what he was saying like wow. and it was really funny to see him so like quiet and like insular because he's so like known for being like vocally Loud. like aggressive yeah. and like so it's so strange seeing this but. He was kicked off of Big Brother because um, producers found like the videos of him. Like they said it was S- like it was like S and M beat like you know kink uh, p- play with like a woman. But the problem is, is like yes, people like I'm I'm really not into degrading sexuality yeah. when it comes to like I anyone trying to embarrass me or like humiliate me or humiliate a fetish or like, any kind of like aggression. I hate it. Mm. But if you're into that, you're into that. That's fine. Andrew Tate though, because of his views on women and how he speaks on the internet, his partner at the time was like, it was just role play we were doing, but he genuinely despises women. Mm -hmm. So him attacking you and like beating you up for like play that's not play. No. He's being serious. Yeah, it might like, be play to you, but that's not play to him. No, and like you can't be someone who talks so disgustingly about women who then engages in that behavior and go, it's not real. I don't actually want to hurt women. Like that, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but that's also like, it, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But also fetishes start from somewhere. Yeah. Kinks start from somewhere. You can't be like, I actually don't like this. I just spend 90% of my time doing it. <laughs> like what? Well, um, that's not how the human psyche works, mm-hmm. sis. You do get enjoyment from it. That's yeah. why you do it a lot of the stuff that he says on the internet i think some of it is sort of like presenty wise but he says too much for it to all be fake and there's so many things of him like admitting like him saying about the passport thing mm-hmm. him boasting Stupid. about having all these passports bit him in the ass and now yeah. he won't get released as much the because he's a flight risk. you can't just boast about breaking laws and doing tax fraud and like all this shit and going like, uh, like this is the thing people's he, his whole thing is romania is corrupt and they're arresting me on fake things yet he himself says I moved to Romania because the police are corrupt and I can get away with doing awful things. Mm-hmm. Like, you, imagine, get, imagine saying that. I mean, the thing is also like, how stupid do you have to be to be a career criminal? And like, okay, let's just say you are a real piece of shit. You go to a place to specifically bribe law enforcement yes. in that place so you can keep being a piece of shit. 
you do not bite the hand that feeds you. Yes. So you, by saying like, well, I bribe the police here. Openly, yeah. Immediately, like how f***ing dumb do you have to be to say something like that publicly to a forum of millions of people where suddenly the public relations of the country is put at risk because you as a famous person or infamous person have said, this country is corrupt and that's why I've moved here and that's why I love this country. Of course course the country is going to be like, shut the f*** up, yeah, sis, exactly. what the hell are you doing? Exactly. You've you've trodden on us, absolutely not. I don't understand how you can get to that stage where you're so detached from reality that you're just bragging about crimes on the internet. People like this ultimately end up in prison. Yeah. You never you can never be like this for your entire existence. I'm mm-hmm. sure there's like maybe a tiny 10% who have managed you, but like the majority of people who are like this end up in jail. Mm-hmm. There's always a time limit to how much they can actually get away with what they're doing. Mm-hmm. How can you as a human traffic another but human. But the thing is, he, he admitted that on his website. His, yeah, old, his old website literally, just, literally said, just that's what I've done. It's trafficking. It's, like, sh- it's genuinely scary. And then there was that thing yesterday, we were talking about Jamie and Chapatu, and I've I've read this um, on Twitter as well, is that there have been teachers in places in America being like, the boys in my class are unruly because yes. they just don't treat women with any respect at all because yeah. all they do is like completely digest and fully subscribe to the idea that <laughs> what Andrew Tate is saying is the way that all men should be. So this is a good point to make. So Luxury said there, school. 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 Schools. So there was a protest in mm. Greece. So there was like a load of basically teenagers ch- like marching down Athens being like, free top J, free top J. And like, if you watch this video, it's literally kids from like, 10 years old oh, up disgusting. to about like 16 it's like these are your followers like you're you're not actually when you think about it like actual grown adult mm. men most of them will see this and go insanity How ridiculous like yeah. the fact that you've radicalized you all these, these young ideas boys into a child's head though it's so like yeah apparently we're the groomers yeah you can't get these you can't fix these ideas because like like it's the it's that old trope that I always say it's like you can't fix broken adults yeah you can only help them manage with what's what they're struggling with and the idea that these these like straight children straight children if that makes sense mm-hmm. will grow up to be men straight men who have an interest in women but also despise them yeah it's yeah. like you like how can you exist in this uh like double think area of it's like weird, I need it? women to be subservient to me and I want to fall in love with a woman but they she needs to like devote herself to me and I'm also going to be just horrible, horrible to her yeah. it's like how can you like you are never going to experience happiness or love in your life no no and it's really and yeah. it's, that's grooming to me that is that grooming. is grooming. that is grooming. Andrew Tate groomed his audience yeah he did he's made them believe that his existence is attainable by doing what he does heinous things yeah and the problem is is yeah he's radicalizing young people and the fact that you would see this this video in Athens of like these literal teenagers marching on free top G and the video is disgusting as well like, they're, 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 it's very incel like it's mm. just like the when you think of incels like they look I, one, whatever you're picturing in your head that's what they look they, like yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what they're acting like and it's just like it's embarrassing it's embarrassing isn't it really it's embarrassing like, oh wow but it's one of these things again where parents you really need to watch what your children are watch what you're online. yes you what? really need to monitor them and you really need to make sure that you are raising well-adjusted adults because yeah. it only takes one thought one like negative thought like this to influence a child's life forever yeah yeah fathers as well like make sure if you've got sons or whatever f- talk to them about respecting women and yeah. being like don't be a I do feel like sometimes this is learnt, inherently learned behavior as well because yeah. there are some fathers out there that are just absolutely disgusting to women and that's like setting a terrible example for their kids. Yeah. And yet we're the ones who are ill. But yeah, Andrew Tate, mess. Absolute mess. Absolute mess. I really hope, I really hope he never gets out. So something, a little update from one of our, one that we did at the last of the year Mm -hmm. and we spoke about Mm. the gender laws that were going on in Scotland. Yes. There's been a development in the soup. So, Scotland passed a law which basically made it Easier for trans people to change their like identities. Gender markers. Gender yeah. markers, exactly. Um, so they have to live as their gender that they identify as uh, for three months. It was three months and they yeah. changed it. So that's how they could change it. But <sighs> the UK government said, no, we no, did not think. We... And in the first time in history, is it Article 35? Is that what it is? I can't with the article. It's basically, they've the UK government has essentially said, you're not doing that, Scotland, because uh-huh. we're going to veto what your what your mm-hmm. your own laws. So in a way, they've kind of taken away the sovereignty, mm-hmm. the sovereignty yeah. of Scotland by saying, 
we don't care that you voted on this. We don't care that you spent six years going through like what's good and what's bad about yeah. it. We don't care that you've asked all these people to present evidence. We don't care. You're not going to do it. No. And it is shocking to see that because that sets a precedent that actually the UK government could say that about everything, everything. Scotland does from this point forward. Everything. Of course, because we're part of the LGBT community, mm. we obviously, when it comes to like the Gender Recognition Act, it, it was, of course, we want to look at that specific point and be like, yeah. this is awful, you did that. However, there is a really over overarching like storyline story yeah. that's happened now is basically the UK government has completely undermined the Scottish government yeah. and been like, no, no bitch, you're not going to be able to mm -hmm. do what you do want to do. The fact that this is the first time they've like enacted this thing for like, I think it was like 30, 40 years or something. something. It, was, like it was like a ridiculous, I can't remember the date, but it was a long time, it was a long time ago mm -hmm. that they had said no to something. The fact that they picked this one thing, that feels very personal. It does, doesn't it? Um, it feels like a, and you can't take it any other way except like a personal attack. Yes. And I do kind of, there's a part of me that's like, go on, break up the United Kingdom, go on. Over trans people, wouldn't it be great just for like, the debate on trans people broke up one mm -hmm. of the oldest kingdoms in the world. Yep. Like how iconic is that? Like pure icon behavior, but also I'd love my community to not be the hot button issue for one thing. Yeah, it'd be second. nice if you could have a f there are Break. so many things going on in the world at large, like the Cosy Livy. The Cosy Livy. And it's just like, for some reason, trans people have become public enemy number one. Like this culture war that against us is so intense. Yeah. People are literally dying in their homes because they can't heat them. And you're like, the worst no. plague on society at the moment is a gender recognition certificate. I don't know the logistics of Scotland being able to have like another referendum to leave yeah, the UK. Yeah, yeah. I don't know but what this means. this is 100% going to a like aid them in like wanting me like, we want to d d uh, yeah. disconnect from you because mm -hmm. of what they've just done. Mm -hmm. There's something about this situation that's, that's, because it's literally like debating my very existence. Yeah. It's, I've been like pulled into this political topic. Yes. This political debate about You don't have a life. choice. You I do have not a, have a yeah, choice. I have to pay attention to this yeah. because this is like fundamental things that are going to impact my life because this wave of transphobia in politics and in, we're going to talk about it a little bit later, in politics and in um, like bills being trying to be passed through laws is yep. actually now happening. And all, there was like a lot of talk from like trans right activists a while back being like, nobody's going to take that seriously. That's not being taken seriously. It's like, don't underestimate how viscerally hateful your opponents are. Yes, yes, yes. they do not care. They yes. do not care. For the first time in history, I actually feel like, oh my goodness, something is like on the horizon that I'm going to have to either jump out of the way of, that I'm going to have to jump out of the way of. And that's yeah. like in a metaphorical sense. And I'm a bit like, how do you even begin to navigate that? That's yeah. terrifying. And like, this is like, although we talk about how like the majority of like, we'll talk transphobic people mm -hmm. just in general, because this is what it, it means more to this topic. But like, these mi like people, like it is a loud minority, but mm. if you get just a few of those people yeah. in Anywhere. any any <laughs> any aspect of power, they can really like screw up mm. so much stuff. So even though we're like the you know when when we did the uh, the first uh, mm. Dagger Millennial where we mm. talked about this, we were like, oh, it's nice to see that we're actually moving forward, blah blah blah. And then a couple of weeks later, immediately because, ten steps back because a few people were like turfy inside the government. We're like, no, we're not doing it anymore. Uh, Rishi Sunak would have had a huge play in that because. Because he yeah. already said that he wanted to bring, take trans rights out of the Human Rights Act. The, so, yeah, the Equality Act. I like, just can't believe it. It's, it's just it's so, like that's already passed. It's a protected law. And it's like, but yes. do you remember years ago when Brexit was all happening, we had a discussion. And one of the first things I said was, as soon as we leave the European Union, that means the, humans right, the Human Rights Acts of the European Union can be challenged. Yes, this, I remember you saying yes. the first step in challenging what it means to have a human right. Theresa May's government actually yeah. was pro amending the Gender Recognition Act and making it easier to self-ID to in order to actually get a, a gender recognition certificate. I don't know anyone in the audience here who's tried to get a GRC in the UK, but they are a long, lengthy process. They're expensive and they're difficult to get hold of. It's not like you just go to your doctor and you get everything yeah. cut off and they, they interview you with yeah. a sticker saying yeah. I'm a... <laughs> oh, Tesla. Tesla. That's not how it happens in the slightest. But it's like this loud minority has made everyone like believe. who doesn't yeah. understand that, believe that that's the case. And that, yep. that, that's not only the case. It's just like this irreversible, huge decision that you're going to undertake can be just taken like that. Yeah. That is not the case in the slightest. And it's frustrating to think that actually Theresa May's government was going to like 
that was part of their manifesto was to like make it easier, make yeah. the lives of trans people easier. Yeah. And then when Boris Johnson came along, that was like snatched out, made a culture war. And here we are a handful of years later being like, oh my God, I might be legislated out of existence. Yeah. And the thing is as well, is the Tories once, like it's basically, it was Id- identical timing when they blocked the Scottish law. They also were like, well, we're going to actually extend the, uh, you can't conversion therapy to trans people as yeah. well. So and it, it happened like- exactly the same time. And, me, I mean, this is conspiracies, but like for me personally, I believe that was a very calculated thing to do. But like, we don't hate trans people because look, we did this. We're yeah. just doing this because we want to protect women. That was a very calculated mm-hmm. move to be like, oh, okay, well, well, we'll say that no conversion therapy for trans people as well as gay people. Mm-hmm. But this other one, no, 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 no. I can't believe we even have like conversion therapy in this country still. Mad. It's shocking. It's so shocking. Barmy. It's something that's so far removed from my life that I yeah. very rarely think about it. But yeah. actually hearing stories from people, it's like here, yeah. like every now and then there's something that happens in the world and you think, oh, we really aren't as as advanced as some of the technology we, is, yeah. we use is. Well, we, we, we've been uh, slowly going down the... Like, oh, we are the, not safe for LGBT people. No, yeah, we used anymore. to be one of the play like best play countries in the world. I think it was, mm-hmm. wasn't it? We were like right at the top, near the top, and slowly over the years, we've become worse and worse and worse. And now I don't know what the number is, but we're like a lot further down mm-hmm. on like the hierarchy of LGBT safe spaces of, of the world. Mm-hmm. Do you know? I was reading this morning on Twitter as well that Canada, there's a petition going through a Can- the Canadian government right now to say if you're trans in any of the Western countries, you can seek asylum in Canada from wow. your government. Isn't that wow. just like where what how did we get here that is and it feels like it's happened particularly fast mm-hmm. literally a couple of years is all it's taken i think unfortunately because of social media everything everything can change so everything fast. can change so quickly mm-hmm. one minute you can be praised and the next day you can be hounded to death but i mean this is the jk rowling effect she 100%. she has radicalized so many people i don't know why people still try to like talk to her because no. she's so far down the rabbit hole now that like it's impossible. She's never going to come back from never. what she thinks now. She's gone way too far. Proper, proper in Alice in Wonderland. It's scary. Scary. But now because she has such a huge following, she's going to radicalize even more people. Yeah. And the, they get more confident and confident and more confident and more confident mm-hmm, into mm-hmm. the stage now where they're literally on the street shouting every slur under the sun yep. towards not just trans people now, but the whole community. Yeah. Well, this is just it. It was never going to stop with trans people. No. Never. No. It was never just about trans kids. It's never. It's not about that at all because there was um, Donald Trump recently did in his, uh, I don't know, presidential address video or something. You know, one of those like campaign videos that they do. It was on Twitter and he was like, we are going to ban, if I get in power, we're going to ban gender affirming like care for kids. But then like halfway through the video, he he then said, we're going to ban gender affirming care at any age. Yeah. And that's like, that's where your goal is. Yeah, like, that's, that's the goal. one of the first steps of like unraveling people's lives. Yeah. Well, talking about America, so moving on to America, slightly no different. No, but we know that it's connected because it's going to lead to this. You know, there's so many states now. We've got we've got a thing here saying uh, a four, 14 bills have been introduced across Arizona, Ar- Arkansas, Mississippi, Nebraska, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and West Virginia to try to ban. Any public displays of like drag performers. Yeah. Any, yeah. And they're trying to define what a performance is. Yeah. And they're using the word prurient. And I think that's how you say it purient, prurient. And it basically means like against like oldie worldie mil- religious moral grounds kind yes. of thing. It's so weird because in this language, they're also like basically they're kind of banning trans people from well, public. This, so this is what this is this is the start. Again, this is how things start and it yeah. snowballs and changes. So it's essentially what they're saying is we want to ban drag people from performing in front of children or being anywhere near a child mm-hmm. because if they're grooming them. They're, you know, trying to convert them to, you know, predators, blah, 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 blah. Shocking. Language. But a lot of transphobic people, a lot of them see trans women as drag queens yeah. or like dressing yeah. up in play. Or it's the set, Yeah. Or it's like one and the same. Yes. Like say Luxera was in America and was like just having a bit of fun on the street or something, would they sing like, <laughs> <laughs> doing a line of code? <laughs> but like, say, say like, say, would, 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 would a turfy be like, that's a, that's not a woman, that's a drag queen, arrest her. Like, Literally, what, like, where, where's where, the protection of, yeah. act, like, uh, it's a bit like Donald Trump saying, yeah, specific, first we're doing, yeah, first we're doing the for age children, thing, and yeah. then it's all, and all then ages. It's like all ages. So, so it's, it's like, where is this going? And like, yeah. how is this going to be enforced? And like, it's so, but scary. Then, but then also, like, so they use things like um, performance as gender or gender of performing as the opposite gender of which they were assigned at birth, whatever the, whatever the language is that they're using. But then it's like, 
So how much of like where down the ladder does that go? Is that like yeah. oh, just a woman wearing jeans is like oh no, is that no. Tesla? Arrest her! Like where does it go? What yeah. is the what is, is the point to take it all the way back to this like idea of a nuclear family of like the fifties and sixties and be like, well that's it, that's the only way you can exist. And yes. Anything outside of that means that you are somehow grooming a child and yeah. therefore a paedophile and therefore yeah. put in prison immediately. No well, the, questions the thing, asked. Why? Why is the word like wh- how is the word groomer become so? commonplace bastardized yeah. where now it's it's like someone is just saying hello to a child and all of a sudden it's like you're grooming him yeah like it's what? really scary because not only it's muddied the water so much that like people won't be able to tell what legitimate grooming is exactly it's almost it's becoming a joke like it's because it's it's so dra- like a drag queen reading to kids like just is not grooming it's not grooming it's a just priest re- however being a an absolute asshole in church mm-hmm. and actually grooming children. They're like, no, it's, no, it's just our no, local no, priest. No, it's no, lovely. No. I don't understand like where does it end? And unfortunately, yeah, what is the end it's... game? Because there will be one, but it won't end with what it is. What no, the topic is now. No. America is such a huge place. To mm. me, I find it insane that it is one country. Yeah. To me, it's like, well, yeah, it's, 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 it's literally. Well, I say it's North America. I shouldn't say because yeah. South America is different. America. But like North America is such a huge place. Like I get that they have different like laws regarding what state you're in yeah so it's like federal and states but the idea that there's one person like president biden is like kind of in control of the whole whole place even though it's weird though because the amount of stuff that he's tried to do whatever but then the senate is it the senate yeah so they have quite a complicated way of doing it which is it's kind of similar to the way that ours works in terms of like it goes through the commons and it goes through the lords and Mm -hmm. then somebody signs it into law um it's kind of similar but it's a bit more chaotic in american um politics and it's deliberately confusing because people don't want you to be able to understand how the countries are really run they don't want you to do they they want you to feel so disconnected that they can just get away with whatever they want exactly it feels like this anyway how some like a political party can be in power but they they actually can't enact anything. They can't do Just much because the Senate ridiculous. has been like taken over by Republicans. Yeah, so, so, it's it's like, so what's the point? There's places now that are already banning. What was the place? Jamin Sharma said it yesterday. I can't remember the top of my head. And it was a country saying, a country, uh, state saying that you could only get gender affirming care to, if you're like 26 years old. 26 or older. I can't remember exactly where it was, but yeah. There's a scary. scary. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say it at the top 26, of my head. 26. Scary. 26. Yeah, you can. So this, so, you can okay. in the military, you can drink, you can this, get married at 16. This is one of the main things that we have such a strange thing to understand. I could go to a doctor and say, I want peck implants. Mm. I want a nose job. I want a forehead, you know, shaping jaw. I want some jaw implants. I could do all of this to make me feel like more of a man. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with it. Nothing no. wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. No because, question. But technically, so many people do that to like gender affirming surgeries. Mm-hmm. Like every day, people do gender affirming things. But as soon as it's suddenly like a trans, person. a trans person, all of a sudden, it's no, it's actually, like, no, you can't gatekeep, you, gatekeep. No, gatekeep. you're not allowed to do that. What you do, and also, even even if even if it wasn't gender affirming surgery, the amount of stuff that I can do to myself legally with no real sort of actual uh, blockades in the way, the amount of like plastic surgeons I could do to myself and not mention anything about being trans, not mention anything about gender affirming surgery. Like it's still insane to think that a trans person who just might just want a a slight jaw reshaping Mm -hmm. or or a forehead Mm -hmm. reduction or something is like, no, because no, no, because you've got that word trans, you must be ill and disgusting. You know, you don't know what you're doing. You're going to regret it. But like someone who's no, like a random person just has a nose job could quite easily regret that just as much as anyone else. Literally. So actually the statistic between um, trans affirming care for surgeries and cis affirming care for their gender surgeries, there's a a dissatisfaction rate of something like 15% in most cases of cosmetic surgery for cis people to look a certain way that they want. Mm-hmm. In trans people, it's less than 1% regret rate. There is a huge difference there, but no one, no one is asking cis people or putting that medical gateway yeah. saying, well, if you regret this, what are you going to do? But it's, uh, it's, it's all because it's not about what they say that it's about. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's 100% just because they're f- transphobic. Yeah, it has 100%. nothing to do with actual we're protecting this person we're protecting that it they don't give a shit they do not give a shit the people deciding on trans laws and trans like um trans medicalism are not trans themselves no. most of the time it's cis people being like well i can't imagine ever doing that to me so we have to ask you at least eight times mm-hmm. every day if yeah. that's what you want yeah it's like well just listen listen just, just listen just listen listen to people i oh, can't say that because graham norton said just listen to a trans person he got roasted to death on twitter and has to leave twitter because he was so hounded by That's turfs unhinged just because it? he said 
Just ask trans people. Yeah, just ask trans people how they live. The thing is, exactly what we've been saying throughout this entire podcast is, it's not going to stop with trans No, people. it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. It's a slippery slope. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, well, even just like uh, Nazism. Oh within, my God. Within like the turf community. That like Posey Pos- Parker. Posey Parker originally just started off as like a protecting woman. I'm just going to do blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And now she's literally yeah, hanging out of- with neo-Nazis. Yeah, full on Nazi. Now, I remember when, when J.K. Rowling first started kind of coming out as all this like turfy stuff. And she did, there was a, there was a, a, a photo of her with like they were in like a cafe or mm-hmm. something and there was like loads of her like new friends around her and like so many of them are integrated in like Nazi societies and it's like your friendship group now is Nazis. literal not like I, I I couldn't even it's, say it because I'm... Bu- it's, 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 it's bewildering, isn't and it? It's it, like, how did we get to this point? And it's almost like none of these people have, like, critical thinking where they're like, no. hang on a second, am I? Like, the fact that she was quoted in, like, Putin's speech. Oh, my God, that was, was like, like Putin's Hang book. on a second, When sis. a literal dictator, a is, dictator like, is, like, praising yes, you. Queen, then maybe an, stop it. Yeah, maybe think. go, oh, hang on. Have I, am I wrong here? Yeah, but no, she just be like, uh, clearly what you're doing is speaking to someone like that. But then that... that no that, self-aware. That thing, that, that thing recently, all those women outside... Uh, talking about gender stuff going oh we first heard about this stuff by hitler the first yes. person to quote oh, what was that i can't what it was uh she quoted like his mind his mind camp mind camp the big lie was first described by adolf hitler in mind camp and no one around her was like hang on a second we're quoting hitler on like a national television a national television they're being they're being recorded and they're literally they're quoting Hitler in the street regarding trans women. And not a single person was like, let's not do maybe that. Not maybe, to- maybe, maybe, I, maybe this is wrong, actually. Not a single person. It's literally like, I saw it on Twitter and I was like, is this where we're at? Is, it this, was- the, is this the stage of discourse that yeah. we're at already? And it's like, okay, so next stepping, next stage is like laws to be brought in. So like what the hell is next? Yeah. It's genuinely yeah. stressful. It's so extreme now with diff- like it's sides. It's so extreme. With the world divided, girls! There's no coming back from when you get to those extremes. Your your brains are mush. Mm-hmm. It's just, you believe everything it and anything you see. It has to be an see. illness at this point because yeah. it's like, how can you possibly be that far removed from like a healthy, caring society? Yeah. The fact that you actively just like quoting someone like Hitler after everything he did as if like, as if it's the most normal thing to say Ever, but like, that also then show that indicates like a pattern of behavior because you've clearly developed to this point. You're going to develop past it. Yes, when you're openly talking about Hitler as if it's so normal, off camera or off off outside of these like rally events, and you're just like inside your house with your friends on your own. What the. F- are you saying? Yeah, like if, that, if you're so comfortable indicated. in public saying that, even just like if you're at work or in your friendship group, there are some things you say at work that you wouldn't say in your friendship group that you wouldn't Imagine say at work. Imagine being in any like job and just like, I don't know, being like a manager at, I don't know, something in, inside of a department store and being like, this morning, girls and guys at the meeting, I'm just going to quote Hitler at you. Yeah, can you imagine? Like, could you imagine the scandal? I that? don't understand how that, how that doesn't encroach. Like that surely quoting something like that from Hitler should be classified as a, like, you'd a hate so, crime. You'd think you? In and Germany like, it would be. Yeah, because, yeah, exactly. So I'm surprised that you'd be allowed to say that on the street and like you don't get prosecuted for inciting violence. Violence like, <laughs> yeah. from one of the worst people to ever exist. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how that that's illegal. Bar oh, it's me. scary, isn't Bar it? me. It's so ridiculous. Totally unhinged. Yes. Got a couple more things I want to talk about. Yes. But George Santos. <laughs> One of the most famous drag queens in the world oh right now. God. The idea that he was like, it wasn't me. It wasn't it's me. A, a left wing lie that's been spread on Twitter. You're trying to get the woke mob, the woke agenda. It's like, well, you are right there, sis. That is, that is you. That is you. Maury. That's the man, sis. <laughs> I love that now I'm just typing George. He's the third, fourth thing coming down now. Like, this... well, what? Yeah, what exactly is he? He was like so elected, he... wasn't he? He's so elected. He's, uh, he's a yeah, he's a senator. He's, just, he's a senator, congressional district, serving since 2023. George Santos lied is, about everything is as well. Yeah, so George Santos has lied a lot. I mean, I can't remember to go into all of it, but he is a Republican, um, like part of the Republican. Mm-hmm. Party, I guess. I'm mm-hmm. not sure what the correct term is in Amer- I, Americans terms. I get really confused. Like, yeah, what's which? They're similar, but they're not the same. Yeah. He recently came into the zeitgeist because he he was like saying that like, drag queens are like groomers and things and being like very very Republican, mm-hmm. like far right conservative kind of like Talking and points, and to- to- yeah normal. But as he was saying this, suddenly Twitter exploded because there was a photo of him from like ten years ago doing drag, mm-hmm. and it was just like the funny thing is, first of all, he denied it, but it was it would. I'm not trying to like shit on like cheap drag or whatever, but it was literally just like, 
a man with a bit of blush and yeah. some eye and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and a fake it, it was shitty very, wig. Like, first time. It was very first time in drag. It was so clearly him. Yeah. The fact that he was like, it's, it's not, not me. me. I, I didn't, didn't do that. It's it's so how you thought that that you were gonna get away with that. And it's a, weird, isn't it? It's but, so weird. Then he got memed to mm-hmm. hell on the Jan even did like yeah, a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She Jan from Drag Race cosplayed as him. And it was just like so balmy. And then he came up being like, yes. I was just young and having fun. All right, so when you were in drag, you were yeah. just young and having yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when other people are doing it, they're actually they're like groomers. dangerous to society. So now, yeah, but when so you w- do it, what's it's the, fine. What's the real story? His whole career it's has been like lies. based on lies and based on. I just don't understand how you've managed to get to this level of fan, like stardom, I guess, in in the in the in the in the political, in the political sphere, yeah. sphere. When you're so just lie, like you're just I, a liar. I, 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 Everything you say to... is a lie. How are you where you are? I, think, I don't get how you've managed to lie your way into that much of power. Like yeah, I don't... literally lied into the like top of power. Weird, privilege. So weird. But this the drag queen thing was so funny. It was really weird, wasn't it? Because it... of all the things that you'd think, okay, maybe I won't talk about that because yeah. I have a kind of history with that. Dra- no grooming the no. children. No yeah. drag is dangerous. Sir, here you are as a drag queen. Here, no, just young fun. and having fun. Lies. Bonkers. It's just so weird. It's like Bonkers. we're living in a, a Black Mirror episode. It's so weird. And then he was like um, having like a spat with uh, Trixie Mattel on Twitter. Yes. And then like referring. And then he literally quoted Drag Race that and it's like, so you watch a drag race episode from a couple years like a few years ago it's not like 10 years ago when you apparently did your drag queen or whatever Mm. it's like you're still keeping up with the drag queen knowledge and making like funny references and things like you are such scum like you're such a scummy individual back on the community yeah what makes it even worse because like it's not like i know i'm this is i'm saying this in the nicest possible way because i'm obviously incredibly feminine but because he is like so puffy (laughs) as well it's like (laughs) The fact that someone like you is so like, I hate all of the people. Yeah. It feels so jarring. Yeah. Like it's so <laughs> jarring to see. Like imagine if I was suddenly like, I hate drag queens, their groom is awful. Like yeah. it's so like jarring to see. How is everyone around him not going like the Republican party being like, <laughs> like oh, you're not one of us sis. <laughs> <laughs> how are you here it's so weird, weird i mean it? i do think some of it plays into the fact that they like to use people within communities tokens. as like tokens and then yeah. like, we're not homophobic because we've got we've george got yeah yeah that's very yeah yeah we love dra- well they don't but no, yeah they'd they be like we love yeah the gay but as we talk about look. lady maga for ages oh when, my god lady, lady maga. maga oh awful lady maga like, she's still the, doing i want to search her lady maga is this like republican drag queen who like was a huge like MAGA so make America great again who was obsessed with Trump but like you literally the Republicans always say that drag queens are grooming children and you're there that. like vote yeah, for Trump I'm a drag queen la, la, la. like what? what so something that has kind of again recently came into more of the zeitgeist as of late is AI generated um like deep fake deep fake Pornography. Adult <laughs> yes. Yeah. AI, I mean, AI kind of generated stuff has been here for a long time. Like yes. this, this whole like seeing celebrities naked and seeing all that, it's not a new thing. Like there's always yeah. been images going around of like fake na- news of like people, but like it's always been like shit. Yeah. It's never really been like believable yeah, or whatever. I agree. Recently, um, there's been like a lot more of the deep fake. So when the deep mm-hmm. fake things came in, about a year ago, I want to say. Yeah, that's feels... when I really started seeing it everywhere. Like, yeah. It's it's jarring to see deep fakes as well. Cause I remember, do you remember a couple of years ago and they were like deep fake technology, the new technology. And it was yeah. like, re- it was still kind of janky and a bit yes. like, Oh, that's kind of creepy that we're going down this route. And now, now, now it's like almost are. indistinguishable for yeah. real. So what was happening was a lot of um, famous women have had their like faces superimposed and deep faked onto like, Pornography. Mm-hmm. So there's like looks like real Explicit videos of them. Explicit pornography. Yes. God, how do we begin to talk how, about this how person? Do we, yeah, how, how do we, do we talk mean? about this like, person? Ridiculous. Unhinged. So, there's this. There was a, a streamer mm-hmm. um, called. I've got. I've gotten his. I didn't know the last name, but it's called Brandon Ewing. Ew. So yeah. he was on one of his streams, and he didn't realize that in when he was like showing his screen or whatever, there was a tab open onto one of these websites where you pay for. Deep fake, deep fake adult internet content, porn. Yeah. Everyone saw this in the Twitch stream and went insane. Mm-hmm. One of the uh, people who was a victim of the the you know the AI porn came out with a video of crying and things. Was really upset. Yeah, absolutely. as you would be yeah, because absolutely. it feels because it's a, a huge 
huge violation a of huge like, violation. personal rights. But not only that, they were like good friends. He didn't like just like watch porn of like just some famous person. With the it was like people that he actually knew and worked with, like mm -hmm, colleagues as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. So of course it had like a huge battle against him. But he posted this like really cringe like apology video on his like was it? I think it was Twitter. But what made it so even weirder was the fact that his wife was like sitting behind him, like sobbing, like through the whole thing. Just like weird. It was so bizarre. I don't believe he's sorry because he was no. done. Like he's, he's sorry only sorry he because caught. he was caught. Yeah. Like it's... how long was he doing this for, and how many people? Yeah, because have he's like it this. was just a one-time thing. It, no, it's oh, not. Oh, but it's very similar to you know Alex Jones had like a, a trans porn oh, tab yes, open yes, yes. on his thing and he was like it was for research it was for research, no, no. Was for research. and then he's like cuddling Blair White like two months later yeah exactly like, ridiculous mm, 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 but like mm, he came on stream mm, and but then there's, there's also been the horrific reaction from uh, Ethan Klein <gasps> yeah laughing what? at laughing her laughing at her so Ethan Klein is a, a big YouTuber him and his wife Ela have done like I mean they've been doing YouTube for Ever. Ever. Yeah. As long as I've known YouTube almost. Ethan, Ethan has got himself into hot water quite a few yes. times from his comments he's made on, on the internet. But so this the girl, the girl who was like one of the victims of this was literally on her like Twitch crying her eyes out because she's so humiliated by what's happened. He's there just like no, laughing and then told He's one of his producers who like does like the, you know, the cameras angles and just all the, the sound bites and everything to play like sad piano music. sad yeah. music over it. And which made them all like die with laughter and it's just so unbelievably disgusting mm -hmm. like because a woman's consent has been taken away they sort of don't see it as a real thing they're no. like no like it's like you have to if you're gonna be a woman on the internet you have to get like accept that this is gonna happen to yeah. you yeah unfortunately until it literally happens to like the elite yeah like the people at the top until it happens to them it will not be taken seriously mm -hmm. the law will not catch up to mm -hmm. what this new thing because Essentially, although you you could argue, well, it's not actually real or whatever, but it doesn't matter because again, there'll be enough people who yeah. will believe it. Yeah, this is exactly Who are tech savvy, who are like, there'll be enough people who will believe this and will think that this person has like done this. And then instantly those people then become overly sexualized yeah. for so many people where they get treated differently. Yes, um, this is it, yeah. It doesn't matter whether it's fake or not. Enough people will believe that it's true that there needs to be some kind of laws that people who are not consenting to sex work cannot be subjected to sex work. Yeah, 100%. Like 100%. You've said that, like, so good. I could never have I, said it, it better. It's, it's just awful. I just don't understand how people can be so dismissive over mm. how, like, upsetting this could be to someone. Well, it's men being dismissive because yeah. it's like, well, they are the purveyor. Like, realistically, the porn industry is driven by male desire. Yeah. Like, that's what it is. And it gets more and more, like, dark the longer it seems to progress. Really? I just couldn't Isn't imagine it? if I heard, like, one of my friends had been watching deep fake porn of me. Like, yes, one of my actual yeah. friends who I know being like, yeah, I, I jacked off to, like, a fake porn of you. I don't know, it's weird. weird. It's, re even... it's really invasive, isn't yeah. it? Really invasive. If you really knew what you were doing was, like, naughty, 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 shouldn't be doing it naughty naughty yeah you'd be like well i need to scrub the fact that I've you would have been hyper that. aware yeah, of you it been yeah. hyper aware of what you have done is like bad but the fact that he just had it open whilst also on stream being and didn't even think to look to the left by a yes. centimeter yes. to go oh that tab's open i should not have any of that yeah. or whatever yeah it's just like well clearly it was such a normal thing in your life then oh yeah i don't believe this was like a one-time thing even though no, he like claimed no, no, it no, is no, i just no. don't believe you for a second no, no, like no, no. i don't that is full backtracking trying to like do not believe it damage control but it's that is. scary that like the thrill of seeing that and seeing like celebrity nudes and things like it's so people are so obsessed with like the the idea of not like people not consenting There's, to it yeah, they're so turned on that's by that the lack is. of consent it's, it's lack really consent. scary it's the lack of consent that becomes the kink in this yes, in this yes. point because there is so much pornography on so the internet much. so much every, there's something out there for absolutely every niche interest you could possibly experience already out there for free from on the consenting internet. people from consenting people but the idea that you've gone no i have to pay deep fake ai for my, of my like good friend like that's yeah. just Disgusting. It's disgusting. So on to a slightly less intense sort I of like, like a less I like serious note. Oh, I cannot believe the discourse that has happened uh, around Drag Race this season. Mm. Oh mm. my god! So for the people who uh, don't know, so RuPaul's Drag Race was originally on logo tv back in the day mm -hmm. then it was like put onto vh1 mm -hmm. and now they've been uh put onto mtv yes when when it was announced that mtv was taking uh 
Drag Race. It was actually quite exciting because like they had a bigger budget. Yes. Like clearly the MTV has the more pristine. Like who knew about VH1 before? Do people know that much about VH1? Not a lot. Like, I don't MTV know what... is like an international brand. Yes. Like the fact that the UK people were like, we know what MTV is yeah. when we were chill. I never heard of VH1 until it until they got Drag Race. Yeah. It was really exciting, but it was then shown to us that they were going to shorten the Drag Race episodes to put in the Friends of WeHo. The real the Friends, real friends of, of WeHo. WeHo. There's some like insufferable like gay people. <laughs> <laughs> this is our life in WeHo. Although yeah. we don't live in WeHo and we also don't know each other. Uh, yeah. Even it's- though it's being like, portrayed as these like friends who live in WeHo and what's yeah, the life and in like, WeHo old drama it's very the only way is Essex but yes. like 2023 and filled with gays yes but it's also this, like even the name the real friends of WeHo it's weird it's, I was talking about this on my stream the other day because it's just so if you're does anyone outside of WeHo who's not like somehow clued into the culture of like yeah, Hollywood do know, does anyone know what WeHo even yeah, is yeah I don't know weird and it's like the real friends like what what a horrible, horrible title for a show. The Real Friends of WeHo. The Real Friends you of WeHo. Can, you, even using the word Hollywood in a phrase of a title would carry more like SEO optimization yes, yes. than WeHo. Nobody is going on Google and going, WeHo. They're going, Hollywood, blah, blah, blah. Like, exactly. It's just so deranged. So the thing is with this as well is like, so I watched a video basically dissecting the first episode. Mm-hmm. And it's like... They are so self-aware of what the show is that it takes you out of like actually watching a show and it feels like you're watching some kind of like backstage outtakey oh, really? randomness. Yeah. Mm. So like the amount of times that where like they actually talk about why I'm doing the show is why I'm the show. Oh, I'm going on the show. And then people talking to their friends going, oh yeah, I'm crazy for doing the show. And it's like, it's so... And there's so many moments in it where like the uh, camera crew are being filmed themselves. So like you'll see them being filmed in like a back garden and then the camera crew will film the camera crew filming them. So like, what's the point? It's what's really the audience? Straight, it's who's really strange. And like all the fights and things that have happened on one episode are all like orchestrated from the very beginning. Oh, of course. They're all fake. Or, and it's just like watching it. And I, I was watching it, watching like kind of watching someone watch, a bit like mm-hmm, you were watching mm-hmm, the TV show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's like not, aiding really the queer community at all. Well, this is just it, isn't it? Sometimes it feels like cis people have just, or like cis heties have just gone, gays, we love the gays, yeah. the gays love us. The, the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail. And they just go, okay, well, we're going to make this show. And it's like, well, what's your artistic creation? Of what, like, what's the what's the direct, what's the angle for this show? Uh, the real friends of We Hope. Yeah, they no, don't know no, each other. No. They're all just slightly famous names from nearby. So, hello. It's like, why, why, who is this show for? What's it for? So why? we should probably talk about the elephant in the, the fact that they put Todrick Hall on it. Well, this is it, isn't that it? That was, Scandalous. that was an interesting. So I guess it's one of these things again, where like, if you're in the community and you know how bad Todrick has like treated his uh, workers, workers and basically just his political and famous yeah. experience for well, stop. The thing is though, like even non queer people who don't know that, like they would have seen him in Big Brother and he was so badly received in Big Brother because of how awful he was playing the game and how awful he was to the people there. So even outside the really community. really short memories, you know. But I feel like our community holds vendettas and we hold grudges because we know how important it is to have like good representation. Yeah. But like these executives at MTV were clearly just like, Todrick, a famous guy. But the, so the th- that's the thing though, because in the show, his first like appearance was all mm. talking about scandals and being like, people tried to cancel me. And they put like these really weird graphics on the screen and be like, you should die. It's these sort of like fake screenshots of like, tweets and things but like no apps or anything it's just, just just like the words and it's just it was just cringe it was yeah. just so like it's everyone else's fault not mine but well, this is the problem with like cancelled people it's not cancelling if you're being held to the consequences of your own actions yeah that's not cancelling that's yeah. just around find out yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just that the problem is with the drag race thing is now is the fact that they have cast the biggest cast they've ever had yeah 16 yeah. queens yeah but now they've like cut the episodes down to like a 45 minute yeah. slot with adverts and it's so fastly edited mm-hmm. that like i it's it's almost like watching a strobe light controversial opinion don't mind the slightly shorter episodes but it does not work with 15 or 16 queens that's the queens. thing i don't mind short episodes Eight queens yeah. seven queens maybe for an all stars maybe yeah. if it's like you know you got six people and you really want to see like excellent drag yes great but 
in this like you can't even you can't even like get to know any of them snatch game I watched was almost... impossible like <laughs> Sasha Colby said two things that, that was two it things. gone some of them even had just said one yeah. it was just like in, like it's so quick I don't understand why the exec people who made these decisions thought we're gonna cut into a show that's gonna get us way more viewers mm -hmm. and cut into that and put this like show that no one asked for yeah because people can be like well it's good it's good to have representation regardless and Todd Drick did this on, on mm. Twitter and he was like you're just a uh, mad gay people yeah. being successful famous gay people but, like why did the show need to have famous people? Yeah. Why could you not have taken people who actually lived in West Hollywood around the whole spectrum, not mm. just gay men? And so this isn't like a fair representation or a thing. And you're just like bitchy catty fighting, like, you know, promoting it's, just stereotypes of gay men being these bitches. Like, it's, it's really outdated. Yes. It's like a really outdated format of a show. Weird. Like, why? And the thing is as well, is I feel so sorry for the contestants who have spent thousands and thousands of mm. dollars to be on the show, to buy the outfit. To show a runway like, that's The runway just seconds. literally, then, yeah, literally is like, buy it, buy it, buy it. It's ridiculous. So why bother? But the thing is, so for people, some people might not know, so Drag Race uh, is the show and then they have another one called Untouched, which mm -hmm. basically is like behind the scenes kind of footage. They chat about after being judged and everything. And it's, you know, that's where you get a lot of the kind of like community driven kind of chats with each other, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But what, they, what the executives of the network did was normally it's Drag Race, then Untucked afterwards. Mm -hmm. But what made people even angrier about this whole Friends of WeHo is the fact that they cut Drag Race down, put... Friends of WeHo after Drag Race and then Untucked is after Friends of WeHo. So it's almost they, like- They tried to shoehorn it in It's almost like they tried news. to force you to have to sit and watch this episode. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you go look at the ratings, like over Everyone half percent, off. over half of the audience who was watching Drag Race just stopped and then mm -hmm. came back for Untucked afterwards. But that's what's made people even more angry. The fact that it's almost been like forced into that little section it was like, yeah. this should, Drag Race needs Untucked afterwards. We yeah. don't need to watch something else before it. I actually like the way that the UK one has it, where it's kind of like merged into the main show. Merged together, yeah. Merge mansion. Merge mansion. <laughs> it's the same thing as since the basically the pandemic and lockdowns, how so many streaming services have popped up being mm -hmm. like, well, you also need to subscribe to us and we're going to take our things. It's like people are going to get bored and pirate. Because yeah. it's just like, you're once again, you're ruining what made you attractive in the first place. Yeah. But I think it's like, Netflix now <gasps> being like, no. uh, there's a page one that, and it has lots of little money and you can have adverts in it instead. Yeah. And now they're saying that you can't share passwords yeah. as much. So what's what's stupid is like, in, I think it was 2017, they tweeted like, love is sharing a password. Yeah. And that was a like tweet that went viral because it was like, love is sharing a password. And saying you can share the password for in uh, for Netflix and you can mm -hmm. share it around people, blah, blah, blah. But as recent times, they're like, um, no, no, no. So now that they're being like quite heavily memed on because mm. of them originally saying that. But what they're saying now is if you have your account, you have to sign in at your primary location mm -hmm. once every month and watch some kind of show to say that you're home. But that doesn't extend to like, if you're someone who's in uni or people who just in general have, have it and travel around a lot, maybe they're gone for six months and they're not coming. Like imagine Callum. It, like if I wasn't here activating the subscription because it's it's meant for this home, he, he would just only have his Netflix taken away from him because he's not going to be home. They're for, treating like, it more like a license than yeah. like a business model. And that's kind of like, well, that's where you start to lose me. I'm like, as soon as you start... In trying to force people because they at the end of the day a Netflix account is elective yeah and we can go elsewhere if we want mm -hmm. to or we can stop I mean that, like, they've people are already doing that that's kind of why they're panicking it. now yeah and so I understand that business seems to run on this model of unlimited growth yeah like for, just forever growing as big as you can with no like ugh, I don't even know what the word is like reinvestment back into the oh, community the community but it's just like it gets exhausting having these conversations because it's like every couple of years a company will try and then you're like so oh, just yeah. don't like stay in your lane sis. stop being an idiot works really well you're just an entertainment thing stop. it's greed though if you isn't it really a lot of it's want greed. to attract brand new people and keep them on stop cancelling shows after one season because they didn't do immediately as best as your flagship yeah well it's like they said about that 19 what was it 1977 yeah they, 1877 1877 got cancelled and I'm like well were you expecting it to do as well because you released it at the same time as Wednesday yeah. well what Wednesday's become your most viewed thing like ever and you're going well this other show didn't do very well well why did you release it at the same time as yeah. Wednesday yeah 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 who is making these businesses decisions that saying no password sharing but yeah. we're gonna ruin our own content because yeah. i really wanted to watch 1877 but yeah. i'm not gonna bother now because what's the point yeah what is the point because you're just gonna get frustrated yeah mm. although i thought Red, the, the series of resident evil was a bit stupid 
don't finish a season with an open ending. That doesn't make like I understand oh, if yeah, it, I, I, I understand if it was like you ended the storyline that was happening, mm-hmm. but you left it open to like you could do a second one. But if this doesn't, it's fine. The ending of Resident Evil, it was like fully open ended. It, yeah. it would be like watching like a series and just stopping halfway through and be yeah. like, oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah, end of the, end of the line. Like I hate that. And then to cancel it. But also, I like they're kind of trying to desperately to like get the same level of. I don't know engagement or viewership as they got during the lockdowns. So yeah, like, well, you just can't. How because- do, yeah? How did how did the business people go? Look, we're going to do this now, and we know that this is going to do a wonderful. But like, make sure that we're realistic that in the future, this is not forever because lockdowns are going to end. Yeah. As YouTubers, obviously, when lockdown was happening, a lot of our stuff got a lot more views than mm-hmm. what they do at the moment because everyone was at home. My Twitch stream would get like three times the amount of viewers mm-hmm. that I get now because people had nothing to do and they were at home all the mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm. We weren't. Sh- like idiotic to think as soon as lockdowns end oh it's still gonna stay the same infinite growth yeah i'm gonna get like of course how did these companies like netflix not go look this is happening right now we can make a lot of things we can make a lot of money we can do this blah 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 but don't assume that this is gonna be yeah we have to predict that this is not going to be forever so we need to put things in place that allow us to survive outside of that yeah we understand deranged ah i hate it current events let's not talk let's go back talking back talking about things for the 1850s yeah our our next one will be a we'll do some reddit should we just look at cat photos for an hour (laughs) this has been this has been a lot a lot it really has been a lot mm. I can't believe already like it's been a month one stone a month one th- and already this matter of insanity that's already happened mm-hmm. god if it's this intense already what on earth are we going to be saying called December I do want to do these more often though because I think it's important to yeah, talk every, about yeah every couple stuff. of episodes we need to be like look at what look, look what's at the been nonsense happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah well anyway guys should we go watch some Trini and Susanna yeah, we're gonna go watch- <laughs> <laughs> please hit the like button yes subscribe yes and if you do listen to us on Spotify SoundCloud or iTunes please leave us a review give yes. us a five star give us yeah. some nice feedback or whatever yeah. and yeah five stars a month five stars a month <laughs> anyway we'll see you soon guys yes. bye, bye.